Here we are with owner Diane Hafford, and she has turkeys all around her setup. This is some great footage, and it doesn't get much better than this in the wild. These birds have held up at about 60 yards, and a few more calls are cast to the band of gobblers. There are a couple really nice birds in this group, and it's now a game of patience. Who will win this match between Diane and the turkeys is about to be determined as the big bosses start to make their way towards the decoys. This is exactly what turkey hunting is all about. Want to straighten now? Yeah. Okay, just keep your eye on. Not yet. He's got two beards. Just tell me you think you can shoot him? I'm gonna shoot him. Go get him. Go get him. Hurry. to keep in mind if you're hunting Easterns, Osceola, Rio, or Merriam turkeys is they call the same. A lot of people ask me, you hunt Merriams over here, do you have to call different if you're hunting Easterns, vice versa? No, you don't. You just have to adapt to the turkey itself on how that turkey is responding to your particular call, whether you've got to call aggressively or call very subtle. Every turkey is a little bit different. If he's pressured hard, he becomes a little harder to hunt. So keep that in mind on your next turkey hunt because it doesn't matter what part of the country you're in, they will respond to any particular type of call. Here we are in southern Illinois. It's April the 17th and we're hunting eastern turkeys. Our season actually came in April the 5th and uh, this guy actually came out a group of about six real big long beards and we had an opportunity the first day to call them in, not quite close enough. Uh, so we had to let them go. And then we got a little greedy after that because we had some 11, 12 inch beard turkeys in the group and uh, we passed on a few other ones. But this morning we came in, heard some gobbling on the roost, set up, couldn't call them in so we decided to go over a couple ridges and heard some real fantastic gobbling, got hair stained on the back of my neck. So we sat down and set up and got filming and 
A big group of six of them came up over the ridge. They were about 60 yards out. We could tell it was the same group that we were after the first day because we could see the size of the beards and the bodies on the turkeys. They just didn't want to come in. They, I don't know if they didn't see the decoys or what. They walked out into the field. This guy right here actually stopped about 60 yards out and he strutted a little bit and the other guys went out in the field eating some bugs and some leaves off the trees and just sat there and patience paid off, did a little bit of purring and all of a sudden they all decided they wanted to come in check out the decoys. This guy was the only one that was in strut and he got within about 30 yards and could tell he had a real good beard on him. Um, I couldn't wait. The other five were on the other side of him and shot him and I was very, very surprised when I got up there. I don't know if you can see this, but he's got three really good beards on him. That's fantastic. That's the only triple beard gobbler that I had. He's got really good spurs on him. He's probably about a three and a half year old bird, about 23 pounds. Um, like I said, he was about 20, 23 yards out there and dropped him in his tracks. And I'm just as excited as I can be. And we're going to go out and try to get one for the cameraman now. And uh, again, I'm hunting in southern Illinois. I'm Diane Hafford, owner and manager of Rocky Branch Outfitters.